Hi, this is Todd coming to you from beautiful Pennsylvania, USA. It's uh, currently January. It's quite cold outside. So I, uh, like my other video, video logs uh, on YouTube, I'm going to talk about my shelf system and how I grow microgreens and uh, baby greens and other other greens at all different levels in dirt and also using a hydroponic setup that I've created. And I wanted to kind of go over things today of uh, where things are with it and maybe give you some insights into some of the things that uh, I'm working on and show you uh, where things are. So uh, hope you have a few minutes and uh, we'll go through some things today that uh, you might find interesting. So thank you very much for watching. Um, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube and Please give me any comments that you have. I look forward to that. And I look forward to all the comments coming in from uh, all the viewers. So uh, let's go. The uh, system's running really well these days. I've got uh, lettuce growing. And I've also got uh, some other curly lettuce that I just planted, which is uh, right back in here. And you can see it. Just planted that a few days ago, and I put it into the hydroponic system that's growing very well as well and uh, I've got some parsley growing I, I uh, planted parsley in the uh, rock wool and then put it into uh, the hydroponic system and if you want to see my hydroponic system go check out my other YouTubes on uh, snapfreshfarm.com uh, on the, uh, the YouTube channel Snap Fresh Farm and you'll see how I started this whole system and why I started it and some of the other things that I'm growing. I've got kale growing quite well up here uh, in dirt. I've got more lettuce that I planted about a week ago and that's growing and will start to be picked as it gets bigger and bigger. Uh, I expect that to look something like this in a matter of a couple weeks and uh, even though it's growing in dirt, uh, I'm feeding it with uh, hydroponic nutrient in the water that I'm watering the dirt with so it's growing very well with that. I've got my chard growing over here that's been growing for oh, over three months now and I just keep picking it and picking it and it's going really well. And then in the bottom here I've got uh, some rainbow chard that's also growing. We've been picking that. That's been growing for over three months. I've got some lettuce that I started down here that uh, I'll just keep continuing to grow. Uh, it's been pretty cold down here, so I didn't get a very good uh, rate of germination, but uh, the ones that did germinate, they're growing okay and should be okay. I've got uh, microgreens growing. I've got some sunflower microgreens and some pea shoot microgreens. And back there, I've got some mixed uh, lettuce, uh, kind of spicy lettuce microgreens. And then I decided I was going to try doing a whole flat of microgreens which are growing and uh, they've been growing for the last uh, about five or six days. I just pulled the, the uh, cover that I had on these off of them so that they can continue to grow. They were yellow about two days ago and now they're, they're doing really well. They're greening up and they're really starting to grow up. So that's my first full flat of microgreens. Uh, what I'll do with that is uh, probably split that up between my family and my friends and we'll have uh, quite a bit of microgreens. Those are all lettuce, mixed lettuce, uh, sp spicy lettuce microgreen mix. And I got that from one of my seed uh, distributors. So that's an overview of what's happening, how things are going. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to talk about today uh, specifically is a friend of mine, I'll call it uh, Pingicula gigantica. And what this is, when you start growing lettuce or indoor plants you'll, you'll realize that uh, there's no way of getting away from uh, fungus gnats these little tiny gnats you'll see these little black spots on the plant uh, let's see if I can go in I don't think I can go in that far but these little fungus gnats fly around your plants and they start to reproduce and they become a little bit of a problem but if you've got one of these plants which I got from an online store and you can see the website there I won't even mention it but you can see it and that Pingicula gigantica has attracted more of these fungus gnats than anything else that I could possibly find 
So I bought one of those, put it in, and it's got fungus gnats all over it. And this is the middle of the winter even, uh, when fungus gnats are pretty low. Uh, when it starts getting warmer down here, you might see a little bit more of them, but it's been attracting quite a few of those. So if you've never heard of Pingicula gigantica, uh, this is a this is a YouTube to show you what I found that actually works with fungus gnats. You just put it in with your other plants, and I water it. I don't water it with regular tap water. I water it with uh, actually water from my sump pump that is uh, it has no chlorination or anything, uh, and they suggest that uh, when you buy the plant. So it's just one more thing uh, to add to. YouTubes and and things that uh, you might find interesting if you're going to be growing indoors uh, like I am and as you can see uh, everything's growing the lights are doing well got my t8s uh, growing in here I recently changed this system from a five shelf system to a four shelf system and the reason I did that you'll see in my other other YouTubes I had five shelves and then I broke this all down and I created a took the fifth shelf out and I put a lot more space in here for my hydroponics uh, system and the reason was I was getting a lot of uh, tip burn on my lettuce in fact you might still see a little bit of it here and there that's left over it's usually a brown edges on the edge of edge of the leaves there's some right on that leaf there and it was causing a lot of problems and I think it was because my lights were too close to the lettuce as they were growing up they were growing right up on, into the lights so I was able to get another about five inches more or six inches more of lighting, the lights being raised up over the, the lettuce, and that's really helped out. So those are just some of the things that uh, are happening. If you want to feed your family lettuce for salads, and you want to be able to do that with probably the best lettuce, kale, chard, and anything that you've ever seen or have been able to buy in the store, you can set this system up. It's very easy. Just check out my other YouTubes, and uh, I'll go through a... I go through a step-by-step -step of uh, what's involved with it. I even do pricing on one of my YouTubes. So feel free to uh, check that out. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, just a few things, uh, just an overview of some of the things that are going on here with the uh, microgreens and the lettuce that I'm growing and uh, how this is all coming about from the original setup that I did with a five shelf system and put together a hydroponic solution and also growing in dirt. Uh, I hope this has been helpful and you get something out of these videos. Uh, please, like I said, subscribe to my, my uh, YouTube and also leave comments, uh, negative, positive. I'm open to anything and I look forward to your comments. I'm also interested in hearing from people who uh, have done something like this. I know there's other YouTubes. Uh, there's quite a few YouTubes about uh, growing microgreens, growing lettuce on racks, and I really uh, enjoy some of those, watching some of those. Um, and there's quite a few of them that are actually very good and I've actually learned a lot from those. Uh, I've learned uh, quite a bit from watching people like Curtis Stone and uh, some shout outs to uh, other YouTube uh, YouTubers out there. Uh, Marty's Garden, uh, Dowie Farm, uh, Urban Farmer Curtis, Curtis Stone. He's been uh, one that I've been watching lots of YouTubes and I just want to say thanks for all the YouTubes and they're extremely helpful. Uh, I've also got uh, Spring Hill Farms on my list uh, of YouTubes that I watch regularly. Spring Hill Farms has got an amazing system growing indoors in, uh, and they've set that up in, uh, in Canada uh, where it's really cold, which uh, is really interesting to me. Uh, something that I would like to do uh, sometime. Uh, I'd also like to try to set up some microgreen growing and start a business with that at some point in time like Curtis Stone and also uh, what Dowie Farms. Uh, is doing. Uh, so thanks again and I uh, hope this was helpful YouTube and I'll try to create more as things grow and as things get bigger and as I jump into uh, other areas of growing microgreens and, and lettuce greens and other things uh, indoors. So uh, happy hydroponics to everybody that's thinking about doing this or is doing it and uh, have a really good uh, day. Take care. Bye.